Well, here, my friends, welcome back to the Artist Next Level podcast. We are very happy to be here. My good friend Drew and I, we're going to approach again the last five questions that we started last week on the topic of 10 critical questions artists must ask to make their best work or to make their best art. This is uh, part two of the series, which is uh, really, really cool. Uh, we started with a really uh, great uh, conversation. The response has been amazing. Thank you, everyone who listened, who sent your comments. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I, I've been getting all kinds of really good feedback from it. So today's gonna be really good again as we wrap up this conversation with these 10 questions we all need to ask to make our best work. My name is Sergio Gomez. I'm an artist, curator, gallery owner, author and co-founder of the Art Next Level program. And my goal with this channel is to make marketing and art business easy so that you can grow your art career, find new opportunities, sell more art, and spend more time creating in the studio. So if you like that, make sure you click on the subscribe button and click on the little bell so that you receive notifications of our future videos. Hey, Drew, good to see you. How are you? Hello, sir. Yes, I'm very well. And here we are again with our, our questions, our 10 questions. Well, five today, <clears throat> five yeah, last week. And uh, yeah, th th those were fantastic uh, uh, questions that we, you know, we brought out to the to the members and to the public. And um, you know, really excited about what we're going to do with these five questions. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, you know, it was uh, really fun. It was really great. Uh, it got us uh, started thinking and talking about, you know, how to look at our work in new, brand new ways. Particularly mm -hmm. on Instagram, I've been getting a lot of comments from artists who said, you know what. This really episode was really inspiring. It really has helped me to look at my artwork differently or to stop and think, right? Which was the whole mm -hmm. idea to help us stop and think. So if you haven't watched episode one, make sure that you rewind <laughs> and go check out episode one. It really doesn't matter the order in which you go through these questions. If you want to watch this one first or listen to it first and then, but make sure you also go back and listen to the other one because it's yeah. really good. They all go together. So let's get started, my friend. Uh, let's go right into the, the, the questions. I cannot wait to approach the next five. Okay, well, you know what? I'm going to be the uh, the questionnaire here, or the questioner, <laughs> I guess. Okay, so we've got number five. So we've done the first. Uh, let me just go through the first five, okay? Okay. Shall we? Good Does your art work in context with your other work? That's question one. Mm -hmm. Number two is: Is my personal <clears throat> message and narrative in the in the work strong? That was number two. Mm -hmm. Does it reflect my best effort? That was number three. Mm -hmm. How does the composition of each artwork contribute to the overall visual harmony or tension within the series? And that was mm -hmm. uh, not question four. And the question five, which was last week, of course, mm -hmm. how has this work contributed or challenged my personal artistic growth and development? Mm -hmm. Those are very important questions we need to ask. And we have five more today. Mm -hmm. So how shall so I'll just start here with number six. So this yes. is the, the the new question today, and I'll let you take away the answer. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, here we are, my friend. How does this series fit within the broader art world or contemporary art discourse? I love this question, and I think you know the way the the questions came around, which was great, is that. The first five questions are very much introspective in our studio and almost like the last five also think about how our art fits within the context of the world. That's right. right? And I right. love that because this, this question kind of gets us started to think about. So mm -hmm. how does what I make in the studio, you know, fit or relate with what's happening in the world, you know, both my world locally or yeah. With globally as well mm. and uh you know for some artists might think my we might think well you know i don't do political art right for example or things but we still we are all absorbed where we live who we are what's happening yes. in the world and in some way or another you know kind of reflect that too so it's a great question for us to think about you know how, how does my art relate to to what other work happens around the world is going on and i think in order for that to in order for us to understand and I think to answer that question, we need to know what's happening in the world. We need to know what other artists are making. We need to know, you know, it's a question that invites us to to look beyond our studio and to connect with other artists and to find out, you know, what's mm. what's what's happening right in in the that's world. Right. And uh, you know, that's why I love that question. So in your in your case, I mean, I know you you are just uh, you're really getting back into it just now. 
you know, mm-hmm. after a long move and, you know, a new location. Mm-hmm. And um, I know that you put a lot of effort into that, uh, into this question, asking mm-hmm. yourself before yeah. you introduce your work to the public. I think I do as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think it is a very, very important thing that we need. And it's not all about politics. You know, right. although the news channels might make you believe that, you know, everything is politics these days. It's not. Mm-hmm. Of course, we have, you know, environment, which is one of my big loves. Mm-hmm. Uh, politics as well, of course. We have, you know, human rights issues. Mm-hmm. We have uh Oh, multiple issues going on. You pick your, you know, context mm-hmm. and create creating your work. Is it is it benefiting? You know, for example, your voice in your community. So, mm-hmm. and I and I think uh, I think you do this very well. You're very cognizant of what you show and how important it is, and and it gets the questions being asked mm-hmm. by your public. Mm-hmm. So I think you've managed that very well. I'm trying to do that. I'm just now getting into a series, which is again, based on, you know, environmental issues Mm -hmm. Uh, and then some, perhaps some spiritual issues that, you know, I want to address. So these are things that I know that there is a public out there that will listen, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and, and look on their own work and say, am I doing, you know, is my work sort of uh, relating to a cause out there or something? Yeah, 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 not totally. And, and like, actually, you know, uh, uh, pertaining, well, maybe let's go to the next question. So I think what I'm sure. going to say, I think pertains, both I think six and seven, they closely relate to each other. Of course. Okay. So number six, how does this series fit within the broader? Oh, no, I've already said seven. that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Number seven. Yes. Have I considered the cultural, social, or political context in which these paintings exist? I suppose, I guess I just answered that, didn't I? <laughs> Really? <laughs> <laughs> I think we both did in, in one way or another, but it's okay, you know, because I think on the first one, just the number six kind of makes us to realize, like, wait a minute, I don't make art in a vacuum, right? I make art in context. That's right. And I You're think right. it starts us to think about that. And now this question kind of, do, am I touching, it's not that we have to most, but am I touching in any social, cultural, political, you know, aspects of the world? Uh, in, in my case, you know, this particular question, um really has making me think you know recently because i have an exhibition right now going on in chicago that is in a church so oh wow uh, yeah yeah in in a church in downtown downtown chicago so it's quite interesting right because for my work uh you know i'm always thinking about the spiritual component of that that's uh, right and that's kind of my language that i'm trying to convey that's what i see my work fitting within the context of of you know the world and what's 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 happening so to see my work within the, uh, you know, leaving the gallery space and going into the sacred space, mm-hmm. you know, of a church building and having the, the people that go to church see my work on a weekly basis as they come to church because the work is like oh, wonderful on the sides of the building. So uh, it's not an, a gallery somewhere that you have to work to. Like when you go to, yeah. to the church, you know, people will be able to see the, these works. Um, so it's quite interesting, you know, it, it allows me to see my work in a different context, you yeah. know, in more of a social context and see and get reactions and get feedback and, and, and really to test for me to see what I'm conveying is, is hitting the mark on that sense. So I love yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, that's <laughs> a very, very good point because I think we can, we can get wrapped up in ourselves and we can say, you know, to us, we've answered all the questions, uh, in our work in a way, and we start to present it to the public. Uh, and the public really has the final say. They're yeah. the ones that are going to uh, inform us what maybe we didn't quite get or right. d- didn't hit a certain mark. Uh, and then we can come back and we can take all of that sort of general vibe out there mm-hmm. and we can Im- help it, you know, with those points, uh, help us improve on our next mm-hmm. exhibition. That kind of thing. So that having that, and particularly in your case, <clears throat> I love the fact that you are not in a gallery. Yeah. You know, the standard yeah, gallery. Too. This is a completely different environment. And of course, uh, it fits so well with your work. And I also think, you know, when, when, when you're dealing with the context of spirituality, mm-hmm. you're bringing it to the people that you couldn't bring it to a more spiritual place. Right. Being a church. 
-hmm. or something of faith based. Right. So I think you I think this is all really important stuff, you know, and and we have to remind artists that, uh, you know, take a chance. Right. Uh, If your community is is environmental or or spiritual or whichever, find out, find the venues. They don't have to be galleries. Mm -hmm. They can be, you know, your public venue, uh, your, you know, social circle, uh, whatever you are, you know, engaged in. Oftentimes there's opportunities such as showing in a church. So that's very yes, exactly. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, yeah. That, thank you. When I, I got the call, when I got the well, the uh, the text actually that they sent me say, hey, you know, would you be interested in putting your artwork in our church? And I, yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I would How, love that. Yeah, you know, what part of yes don't you understand? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That was that's a big fantastic. Yes. So do uh do send uh do you know send out photos of this because I think yes, I, I would be going. Example. I will be going yeah. uh, the third week of March. Uh, that Sunday, I will Wonderful. be there, and I'll be uh, actually uh, answering questions from people and things like that. So it's, it's going to be fun. Mm-hmm. See, and that's a, an episode all on, on its own, right? Right. There. That's <laughs> exactly. A, that's an education, really, uh, on its own. Right. Okay. So we've got number eight here. What impact do I hope this series will have on viewers and the art community at large? Well, to a certain degree, we've kind of answered a little bit of this, but I think we can expand upon it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think on this, I, what, what I love about this one too is this one is in in terms of the. Uh, I, I think the keyword here is the impact, right? What is the yes. what is the message? I'm here. I think where the message is that I was trying to convey, right? Uh, how important it is and and what is it going to do? And I think it takes time. This is one of those questions that takes time. Sometimes even for us as artists to understand was the impact of something until we have it out there for quite some time and we the purpose of you know going at it over and over and over you can plan something inside the studio but it's until that artwork meets this public meets the world where you begin to see some of those aspects of the impact and this for this question for me was like answered for the first time many many years ago very clearly, I understood the impact of art when I was still, I think it was, I was still in school, I remember. And uh, they invited me to participate in this in this uh, small show. Uh, so I took my paintings. Um, back then, I wasn't doing the big stuff. I was doing smaller things. And very different work to what I did. And I remember, uh, it's a quick story. I remember that I, I, I had a small painting with two hands like this, where right. I pretty much raised my hands and then I did some mm. abstract things on it, you know, you know, it was just kind of a cool piece and I had it in the show. I don't even remember the title. I don't even remember who bought it. It's gone. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, I remember, you know, uh, during the reception, there's this younger woman who stands in front of it and then she's been looking at it for a while. Then she starts crying, you know, not loudly, but like, you know, sobbing. And I, I noticed it because I always mm. like to look at, you know, Beautiful. the reactions of the people. So. Uh, I was like, should I ask her? Should I not? And so I said, okay, I'm gonna find out. You know, why? Why is it? So I asked her, you know, if everything was alright. Well, you know, where was she crying from this piece? And her answer really taught me the the power of art, right? That sometimes we don't mm-hmm. even realize in the studio. So she says, when I was a, a young girl, I was with my hands like that against the window. The last time I saw my father when he left us. Wow. So that's super powerful, you know. It's, it's exactly the same position. It says, and this painting brought yeah. me back to that moment, you know. Isn't um, that amazing? I would have never thought about it, you know. I would have never imagined, and that's the power of art, right? That sometimes yeah. we, I mean, I had the opportunity something to, that you really yeah. hadn't intended, and it and I had the fortune to other, exactly, yeah. and I had the fortune to be there when this happened. But you know, this could happen with our work in many different ways. You have our work in, yeah big hotels where thousands of people walk through. I mean, you never know also the impact that some of these pieces, somebody stops and looks at, brings it an emotion, a reminder of some sort. Of course. Yeah. And this is, this is primarily why I, why we do our work to, to, mm-hmm. in the first place, whether it's purchased in a hotel or, or just for an exhibition, we're, we're doing this for a cause and our mm-hmm. cause really is ourselves. I mean, we, yeah. we have to put, if we're answering all of these 10 questions mm-hmm. uh, correctly and, and diligently, and we're doing it because we have to do it. We, mm-hmm. as artists, we, we have something that we have to say. And if it, if it resonates with somebody out there, such as this woman with the hands, 
Mm-hmm. I, I think uh, how beautiful is that? I mean, and that's, you know, if nothing else happened in that mm-hmm. show, right? only that happened, uh, I think you can call that very successful because it, it yeah. touched somebody. And, they, and they, there again, you know, your context or content, which mm-hmm. is the spiritual side, is so important. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. I, I, I think what, what I look at today, there's a current show right now running in um, at Satchi, uh, London. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's of a friend of mine who I'm very fortunate to have this as a friend, but uh, more so a very important photographer, Edward Bratinsky. Mm-hmm. And he's got a retrospective going on at Saatchi. And I think it's four floors of, mm. of his work. And that is uh, probably one of the most important shows anyone can see this year now it's it's art for ed you mm-hmm. know for the ph- photographer for the creator uh these are these are art based pieces but for the viewer and including ed they are impacting a community yeah uh you have to see them to to understand them to understand mm-hmm. why he the photographer is out there photographing all over the world uh for issues that are important to everybody and mm-hmm. And that's a there. He's a really good example. If anyone wants to look it up, and you know, on the web, uh, it's the Sachi Gallery. Edward Bertinsky. I mean, mm-hmm. it says it all. I don't need to explain his work. His work does that, and you know why. As soon as you see it, um, so again, you know, for the greater good and for the general public out there, uh, his message is so perfect. Mm-hmm. As was yours. It's mm-hmm. it's impacting people. Very important. Yeah. No, and, and, and I think, you know, I'm a testament of the impact of your own work because I saw your work, you know, 20 oh, something you. years ago when I first saw it. And the, and the only reason I remembered it, you know, 20 years later, uh, and now we have become good friends, is because it, it Im- impacted me in such a way that I remember your name, you know, for 20 yeah. years out of all the shows that I've seen. <laughs> for some reason, Drew Harris stayed on my on my mind and, uh, and your work stayed on my mind that I was oh, able amazing. to see it again and remember the name and remember the imagery, you know? Yeah. So it's, uh, it, it, again, you know, we, we never know. And sometimes we may never know the impact of our work. Uh, but it is in, sure nice to know in the end, years yeah. later or even days later, uh, when someone comes up and says, you know, Somebody. I didn't see your work and it moved me to a point of tears or it moved me to remember your name mm-hmm. uh, or to join a cause or something. And that I think is, you know, you can sit back uh, at that same day and say, I think I did my job, right? That show or that piece of work or that sentiment that I put out there, it affected mm-hmm. somebody. Mm-hmm. I've done my job and I've done it correctly. Yeah. And that's, that's you know, better. and it's not going to resonate with everybody, but, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you, that example you just shared and, and your example of, of the hands, mm-hmm. there's a, there's two good examples of how art can, you know, yeah. And I was, uh, I was delighted 20 years later to get a call from you <laughs> saying, are you the guy that did that? Yeah. And I said, yes. And, uh, and it was, you know, I'll tell you, it was probably one of the moments where I said, wow, my career has been worth it yeah. just for that one reason. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you just, thank you just never know. And, 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 so, the beautiful thing, and the beautiful thing before we get the next one too, is that, um, you know, sometimes these type of things, Really, but sometimes happen in social media too, you know, where you post something and somebody sends you a direct message. Hey, you know, that, that word that you just posted. Move and me. this is, you yeah, know. again, uh, you know, that's a really um, important part of this conversation is that we are, a lot of us are posting on social media. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important that, you know, this, the reason we are presenting these 10 questions is for, for the, for the artist out there to consider these questions before they put it out on social media, before mm-hmm. they put it, put their work out publicly in galleries or in yeah. churches or wherever, uh, is to really, really be serious and, and ask these questions and mm-hmm. ask them any more questions before you put your work out. Right. It's so important, you know? Uh, so yeah, I hope we're, we're bringing something as well with these questions. Hope so too. <laughs> okay, so we got number nine here. Excellent. Moving along. So I, <clears throat> am I giving myself enough time to study and listen to the work before rushing out 
and presenting it on social media? Great question. It's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about this one for hours. Okay, so you go ahead. <laughs> of course, right? I, I got to get started on that one. Um, yes, a lot of times, and I think that's kind of the, kind of the conversation that started these whole 10 questions, right? That we feel, you and I, we feel that sometimes uh, we are uh, rushing just to get it out in social media, just to entertain yeah. the masses, just to put something out. So I got to finish it because I need to share it. You know, I haven't posted in a week, so I need to yeah. post something out. And therefore, we're cheating ourselves in the studio because we're not really spending the time thinking about the work, but rather responding to the needs of, of the machines, right? So yeah. uh, I, I think this is a, a really good question for all of us to think about. Uh, well, let me, uh, let me add to what work. you're saying. Yeah. I think, it, and the reason why I, I want to interject here because, yeah, go ahead. You know, we've been following you. We, mm -hmm. we joined your organization, the Artist yeah. X Level, uh, specifically for many of us because we needed to know the marketing side. Mm -hmm. And for many times, you have come back to us and said, well, you've got to, you know, the algorithms are suggesting you have to yeah. post two, three, four times a week. Uh, mm -hmm. probably good to post every day. Mm -hmm. And you know, unlike you, I mean, you've got a tremendous amount of content uh, because you're, you know, you're quite diverse in your, mm -hmm. well, you've got your business side, you've got your art side. So you've got a lot of content. A lot yeah. of us don't have content. Mm -hmm. We've got just our own artwork, right? Right. Uh, and sometimes we end up, you know, if we follow the rules of algorithm or mm -hmm. of, the art business, I guess it were. Um, it is sometimes that we we can put out stuff a little bit too prematurely, mm -hmm. uh, and so I think. And you you're you quite you know this. Yeah. Now I think you know social media. You've you've been at it right from the beginning of social media. Yeah. So I think you're starting to see the changes in that now. Uh, you're starting to see some of the artists that uh you know that we view on social media is putting out stuff that's a little bit too fast mm -hmm. bit to you know keep the algorithm going thing yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, I, I love that because it's a it's one it's a sword with two sides right two edges and yes both Absolutely. are uh, yeah but they're important I, and i still i still you know say the same thing you know the more you post the better uh three of to course. five times yeah. a week you know it's always still good and and like, for example, for my paintings, I have its own Instagram page. Sergio Gomez paintings is just my art. There's no yeah. content or anything. It's just my art. Even in that page, I still post uh, at least four four times a week. Uh, so, and, and and here's where the context comes in, right? Uh, a lot of times, there's a difference between um, being active and doing your marketing versus rushing the work that you're currently doing. Yeah. And in order to feed the machine, right? In other words, right. there's a million other things that you can do still in your marketing and to be able to be effective in your marketing that does not include rushing your art, right? That you are That's currently true. doing. Yeah. You get all the work. And I've always said, just because you posted it once doesn't mean everybody saw it. So we all have it's exactly that content that we yeah. can just take a picture that yeah. you posted, you know, last year, this time when you had less number of followers. And even the ones you had only 10% probably saw it. So yeah. You still and then shaking it up a bit with stories. Yeah. The stories. Uh, it's all about know, creating. Content. Yeah. It's, it, it is content, but it doesn't necessarily have to be visual content. I don't know if you would agree. Well, it has to that, accompany, it has to go with the visual. Right? Of course it does. Yeah. Uh, but it could be, you know, a poem that relates to what you do exactly. in your, uh, in your art career. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or that complements your art in another yeah. post or in the next post, that right. kind of thing. So and shaking that, it up a bit, I think is, is the important part, but I think a lot yeah. of artists that have found a, a method, you exactly. know, and they, yeah, they tend to difference. show the same thing every time. And you, as a viewer, for me, I will look at it and I, I'm not sure I even look at it anymore. I just kind mm -hmm. of scroll past it yeah. because it's, it's got a, it's got a trick that is used every day and you're going to go, well, seen yeah. that one, seen that. Right. One. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And, and that is, that is the danger falling into <laughs> the, the, uh, the rushing it. I think that that's the key word, right? They're rushing, rushing the process in order to, to make that quick piece of content. Uh, versus, something and, and, I think, to... 
and go ahead so, and i think we all should uh it's okay to post work in progress right in other words you don't yes, have to wait right. until it's totally finished you can still work in progress but it's the context right what you say about the piece you know this this one yeah. is work in progress i'm still like the painting that i have in the back i have posted a couple of times as as it's progressing and yes. but i'm not posting it as it's done right like this is work in progress it's coming along right giving you know of i think that, that that's a that's a very valuable part of our career you know if we if we just sit around waiting we don't show or post anything until mm -hmm. something's finished and prepared and you know perfectly rendered yeah <laughs> uh, and then we post it you know we that could be weeks right yeah, uh, for months for so some I, <laughs> yeah yeah it was a month for some and and i'm guilty of that uh you know where i tend to well, there are artists that tend to you know wait until that finished product mm -hmm. but i think half of our half of our story uh, that that is important for our viewers and our collectors mm -hmm. and people interested in following us is mm -hmm. that story they yeah. love to see the fact that you have fumbled or that you're not quite right. ready yet but you're getting there right and they like to be a part of it it's a it's a it's a relationship that it's an invitation. exactly i think that, that's the key yeah. word and, and social media has changed you know over over the years in that uh it used to be where you know only present like your your best face your best you know grid now people want to see more right it's not as clean yeah. uh, and you do a good job of that like you know sometimes you take picture with, with the dogs you know outside so it yeah. gives us a little bit of a of a behind the scenes of what it's like to be a Drew Harris in a in a yeah. in a in a good way, and uh, I think that's that's where you know we can all do better at, and and it's fast. You don't have to overthink it too much, and then spend still allows us to spend proper time with our work. Um, that's right in the studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I also think we're you know these algorithms can be dangerous in a way because, mm -hmm. like you say, you know if you don't post the algorithm forgets that you're there yeah your collector base will not see you mm -hmm. as regularly uh so there's a there's a catch-22 on there that double-edged sword exactly you mentioned and i think yeah as long as you continue to get your name out there you keep you know the relevant stories the mm -hmm. you know the little things that are that are involved in your art and in your life i think people kind of appreciate it they yeah so they'd like to know that you're still working uh right you know too many of us have just gone quiet for a year and then all of a sudden pop back on the scene you yeah. know that's no way to keep an algorithm going <laughs> right but uh but uh, yeah so i think we we covered that one did we yeah i think so hey, too Let's to the last so one i think we're, we're, uh, we're, we're uh we're right at number 10 here so am i presenting my work in a professional manner on social media that's a good Again, one yeah we kind of touched on it there with number nine but i think that this is uh this is a really key one and i'm going to let you start for sure on this one because you are the guy that you know is teaching many uh, mm -hmm. on how to how to show your work professionally so yeah I well i think yeah i think this is i, I think we have come to a world now where a bad picture is unacceptable for an artist to have or mm -hmm. to do because the quality of our phones, the quality of our cameras is so good mm -hmm. that, you know, if an artist doesn't take the time to put good light, take the good shot for you put in social media, there's no excuse. And unfortunately, yeah. there's still artists who do it. Uh, True. Uh, even, even, you know, I was invited to, to jury a, a show um, that a couple of weeks ago and to my surprise, you know, this is a, for submission, you know, for something important, not for social media, you know, mm. uh, there's still a lot of artists who had bad pictures and yeah. may have been a really good work, but because it was a bad picture, it's out, right? Because there's yeah. no excuse anymore, right? There's no excuse. That's we right. all carry a super good camera in our, in our packet. So we should all take the time to take a good shot, crap our image properly then put it on, you know, before it goes on social media, make sure that, that you feel th that this image represents your best work, your best ability yeah. to capture the essence of that work. Yes, and I fully it. agree. And you know, the other thing to add to that is that there are so many programs like Art Placer mm -hmm. uh, or what's the other one? Um, 
uh, Canva. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah. Okay. You know, the various uh, platforms that you can then, you know, pay for a monthly subscription mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and get all of these really sort of drag and drop kind of yeah. uh, production value mm -hmm. that, that looks very professional that will adjust, you know, your work and adjust the lighting. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, as you say, you know, this, there's no excuse uh, of having right. a poor work uh right. presented it publicly and you know again you know look at our social media look at our youtubes and and mm -hmm. i mean you, any question you have about presenting your work you just have to ask alexis or alexa <laughs> or whatever alexa or chat, uh, and, <laughs> or chat gpt and and it will guide you in the right direction somewhere right someone's already covered it so yeah. there's no excuse really whatsoever you yeah. know we have been uh in the past we've uh, we were all using these clunky equipment and then, mm -hmm. you know, having to get, you know, uh, large lighting systems in to light your work and everything. It's very basic stuff now. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know, while you can, if you can't do it yourself, hire a professional, yeah. always maintain your professional look. Look, Yeah, uh, absolutely. And even if it's just a, a picture of your working table, uh, and yeah. I'm famous for my working tables. I just like to put some effort into a really nice shot of a yeah. working table. It's a messy working table, but it's a, it's an interesting shot, right? You know, yeah, and it's lit it. well, and I've looked at it and I've considered the composition and then I put it out. It's still a, a, a dirty working table. Right. But, but that's what, that's what, they, that's what people love to see, right? They, they, yeah. And, and it's part of the story it. again, Exactly. you know? Yeah. Quick, so that is the filler, I suppose. Yeah, a quick, a quick tip on this one I would like to share. A, a couple of quick tips. One is uh, in terms of, you know, when you use a setup uh, room, you know, to put your artwork, uh, yeah. always uh, pay attention to the decor of the photo. Sometimes artists pick images that that the decor overpowers the art. Remember, it's, it's, yeah. it's about the art. So make sure that the decor is secondary, right? Yes. Uh, if you pick like a bright orange couch with yellow pillows and your artwork <laughs> in the middle this tiny everybody's going to look at those really cool couches and you're going to forget about your art yeah so make sure that i would say you're muted you know make it neutral the more neutral the better and then so that your art stands out you know um, yeah it fits your work appropriately because it's yeah. Yeah, i've seen too many where that yeah like the big couch and the tiny little painting and you just don't look the painting you don't even together. see the painting yes exactly <laughs> so, so it's doing you no good but the exactly. you know if, if you were a couch salesperson it would be fantastic <laughs> you might you sell know. the couch versus the painting <laughs> so yeah and also um another one uh, that helps a lot for artists who have sold a lot of work this way too is uh, take a picture when you can hang it on a nice spot in your house yeah. for a for a five minutes and then stand by it. Uh, you could be, if you don't want to show your face, you could be just, I have done this for like, just looking at your artwork, put the tripod in the, in the back or have somebody take the picture. What that does yeah. is people see your art in scale of a real human being. Uh, yes. And you know, how, how you don't have to spend time for you now, how big is this? You know, it, it, it might, it really quickly brings it home, right? To the viewer. And yeah. I know so many artists who have sold, artwork just because they show themselves next to the painting in some That's way right. yeah and, uh, well you know, because we're we need some help with scale you know right. uh and you know the other thing too is if you want to show a picture a real beauty picture of your work you can have two or three subsequent images of exactly that I can piece of you know down on a table with a mm -hmm. ruler beside it or something that's going to represent uh, oh, yeah. some form of scale whether it's a tube of paint or something like that so mm -hmm. th that gives the the viewer an idea of what they're looking for and if you make the job easy for the viewer mm -hmm. they're more likely to phone you and say i'm interested in that piece because they've already set it up in their own home because they already know where it's going to go because they yeah. already know what size it is right exactly so exactly. Uh, yeah I, I, I one of my biggest pet peeves i think of social media is seeing paintings full frame no context mm -hmm. no sizes mm -hmm. and it just says you know my new work or whatever the 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 title of the painting is and right. you don't know whether that is eight feet totally. or 
you know, an eight. Or eight inches. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I and I always want I have this sort of nagging thing to to make a comment and say context please context please yes <laughs> yeah because you yeah, I, yeah, I have no idea <laughs> and, I, and so the more that artist does that the more i'm more or less likely i'm going to look at it yeah the, the more because people I, will just skip it and just scroll you're right exactly. and yeah, these are the so little things that are easy to control that doesn't take yeah. too much time for anybody yeah we yeah. could do this on another podcast we'll just set up a, a working uh Instagram account and you know and, <laughs> a, a fictitious artist and we'll do all the mistakes that oh there you go a bad one <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think we've done our ten questions yes and I want to uh, thank you well I, my friend I, for I, yes of course and I would love I think this is a good uh, episode to uh, really invite our friends call to action here to everyone yes. listening in the podcast or watching this video if you want some feedback one-on-one -on -one in your work you know where you can sit with drew or i you know particularly a, a studio practice drew is great at helping you figure out your narrative figure out you know where you need to go with your art you know if you're having trouble what to do next what are your strong pieces sometimes sitting with somebody one-on-one -on -one, it makes wonders what gives you the direction that you need yeah. for the next six months where you can just go for it so uh, this is a good a good um, episode to remind our friends you can uh, book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with Drew. Uh, he specializes in yourself. your practice. Yes, I I do that too, and uh, I also love to talk about strategies, marketing, the all the business aspects of your art career. Uh, yeah. So we offer one-on-one -on -one sessions, and Dr. Ena Gomez uh, she does all the wellness mindset also sessions. If you would like to book a call for that, so uh, to do. To do so, okay. you gotta go to our website, theartistnextlevel.com, and on the tab you will see one-on-one. -on -one. You can click that; it will give you information on how the booking sessions work. You uh, make the payment, you schedule there with the calendar online right there, and then you get uh, yep. sent a Zoom link. You show mm -hmm. up, whoever the coach is gonna be seeing with you shows up, and we chat uninterrupted, no phones to be distracted with. It's just one-on-one, yep. -on -one, full focus conversation with you. Uh, helping you with the needs that you have in your art career and there you go beautifully <laughs> said thank you yeah and they are uh, they are fun sessions uh you know from what i've done and what you've done and we've talked about these uh fantastic uh results it's a results oriented mm -hmm. session so yeah there yeah, you go perfect. and you've got all the information excellent all right, my friends. Well, thank you for joining us today. Hope you have an amazing day. Please uh, share this episode with all your friends and we'll see you yes. at the next level. But wait, before you leave this video, if you are an artist who wants to grow your art career and wants to achieve greater success, make sure you check out the Art Next Level program. You will find a link under this video. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the next video that we have recommended just for you.